Hello, today I'll be doing an experiment with you all. We'll be using VMware vSphere ESX 6.0, quite old, this is update three, and we'll be trying to install Windows 2022 on it. Why? Because I had a question uh, from somebody out there and they wanted to know, can you do it? Now, of course, if you have older hardware uh, running an older version of VMware, this may interest you. Obviously, if you're using an older version of VMware like I'm about to do, you're going to run uh, into the obvious uh, problem that it does not recognize the VMware that is that version of Windows. So let's see if we can sort of bypass that and go ahead and install it. Uh, specifically, this is running on newer hardware. This is a Dell PowerEdge R640, but I mean, that should uh, do the trick. Um, clearly, that specific server could actually run all the way to VMware vSphere ESX i8, which is the latest version as of this taping. So it will run the 7s, uh, the 6.7, the 6.5, and I'm putting the 6.0. Uh, now, please be aware that the 6.0 is, it's very old at this point, and for security reasons alone, you should be running in the you know sevens or eight if you can. Of course, you do have older hardware you may not be able to. If this is a lab environment like I'm uh, doing today, then it probably uh, doesn't bother you too much if you're just creating it and erasing it immediately. So uh, if you like these videos, by the way, or this video specifically, please give us a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe. That really helps us out. We so appreciate it. And if you do want to become a member and support this channel, we'll put your name in our next video. And uh, we certainly appreciate and feel the love when you guys do that. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. The interface is different. I made another uh, video that showed w the windows basically being put on version eight. So the interface is a little different. It's very similar though, uh, in the sense that you're gonna find most of the, um, the settings uh, or most of the steps rather to be the same. So what you want to do at first is I just have to reorient myself a little bit with these. Uh, there we go. So what you want to do is bring it back to this navigation uh, style. What I've done is I've created a storage on there and I actually uh, went ahead and on this storage. Let me show you what I've done is I've created the subdirectory in here and I've put in Windows. This is the ISO that we're going to need to do the installation. So it's pretty straightforward. And if, in case you haven't followed uh, a video previously on how to set up a machine, you go where it says virtual machine. We're gonna go ahead and say create, create a new virtual machine. We're gonna give it a name. So we're gonna call it Windows 2022. In fact, I'm gonna keep it real short. 2022 A2, there we go. Now, there's the whole compatibility uh, portion here now, as you can imagine, you can't get past ESXi 6.0. So if you had a more recent version and you'd see the rest of the versions, the 6.5s, the 6.7s, the 7s, or the 8, since this is literally running version 6, you won't be able to go past this. And as a result, when you go and select the family and you go down to select the OS, you're going to notice here that, let me just pull this up a little bit. So you're going to notice that the versions that are available on here are older. So the most recent we can find on here, which is what I'm gonna be selecting, is the 2016 64-bit. And we're gonna go ahead and do next. And we're gonna go ahead and leave it on this particular data store since it's the only one that I've created. And this is a single drive in the front. Of course, if you're going into production, uh, you'd want to make sure that you've got, um, you know, disks in RAID, for example. So you've got uh, redundancy of drives. And so this is not an ideal setup at all. Of course, I'm just doing this to uh, explore with you what happens when you take a new operating system and run it on an old VMware. Um, the information out there, by the way, is not that obvious to find because 6.0 is no longer supported and it's difficult to find. So from a processor point of view, uh, you could still select quite a few of them. So we're going to go ahead and give it four processors for memory. Well, I'm going to go ahead and... Okay, so it seems that with this setting, there's a certain maximum that we can put. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so we're going to leave 
No, that says uh, must be equal to... Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> well, if I change that to gigabytes, yes, I can't leave it to 4,000. So let me, let me just go ahead and put 16 here since I've got lots of memory. And I don't know why that's not... It doesn't seem to appreciate that. Let me just go back here to megabytes. And we're going to put... Uh, and basically what you do is you take 1024 times 16 is 16384. That would be 16 gigs. It's still not really liking that for some reason. So I mean, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and select 8. So 8, since it's just a test, there we go. It doesn't seem to, uh, okay, I don't know what that was about. Let's see. Let's go back here for the drive. I'm going to give it a bit more space. Probably doesn't matter too much. Now, we're going to leave the rest to LSI Logic SAS. Um, the USB controller, so it seems that it does recognize three. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, for the card, what I would suggest, since this is a lab, it probably doesn't matter much, but you probably want to select VMX Net 3, which will actually give you uh, better bandwidth so you'll be able to get 10g between the vms again this is a lab so it's kind of pointless and the other thing we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and select the iso that it's going to point to so it's going to be my 2022 iso and we're going to make sure that it says uh connect and i think if i click on here i'm going to put connect at power on so that is on and that should be it so now i just do next you take a look around i mean that's good enough for what i'm doing right now and do next. And now if I go back to, let's see what else we've got. So under tasks, it says complete here. So we can see that that worked. Um, maybe I'm gonna make it a little, I don't know if I wanna make it bigger for you or try to see what's in there. All right, so now we've got our machine. Let me go back here to virtual machines. Now we have it here. I'm going to click on it. We're going to press power on. We're going to go to the console and we're going to make sure that it loads and so far so good and this is where we discover if we're going to end up with strange errors or not let me move this a little bit around so you can see what's happening and i'm going to leave everything as default i'm going to say install now and of course in production environment you would be um you know making sure that you were uh, selecting everything that you need space-wise and so forth. Most companies will run very specific things in the VMs. And what that means is you will end up with uh, more nimble virtual machines since they will only be hosting you know, certain type of application, perhaps an ERP or CRM. Of course, if you do bring this into production, the only reason I could see for wanting to keep, again, uh, an older version of VMware like this, since it's no longer supported by the company, would be if you've got you know, an older server and you really don't want to get rid of it for budgetary reasons and so forth. But just always be aware that there's caveats to that. Um, in the case of me trying the 2022, one of the reasons I wanted to double check that this is working properly is you may end up in some environments where per perhaps for security reasons you want to upgrade the windows. So let's say you had an older 2012 R2 and you want to move it to 2022. I mean, that's quite a leap, but for security reasons, it certainly would be worth it. And if you want to go into a hybrid environment, for example, and you want to start using uh, Azure AD and you want to start you just, you know, if you had like a, let's say you had an old, uh, you know, 2008 server, um, then you, you probably want or need to move away from that. And sometimes you may not have the budget right away to go and jump directly onto a new piece of equipment with all new ESXi version 8 and so forth. So this is uh, potentially a stopgap measure. And um, as long as you can back it up and as long as you can restore it and as long as it works uh, the way you need it, um, a used server or one that's been around that's uh, barely used might still provide you know functionality for you for uh, for a few more years so it's all yeah, every situation is different 
Obviously, ideally, if you're making some very large scale deployments, for example, if you're gonna go and install a new ERP system or something in and happens to not be in the cloud and you want it on premise, uh, then I certainly would recommend that you get uh, you know, as recent or new equipment anyways, just for, from a longevity point of view. Uh, one way to look at it is that if you install something on old machines, you potentially end up with um, you know, a shorter lifespan for it and you spend all that time configuring something, uh, you want it to be there for a while since uh, your time is also precious and it costs you money in installation and so forth. Okay, so first off what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to go in, let's see, guest OS and we're going to say send keys, we're going to say control alt delete, we're going to log in. And so once I have done this, in order to get the network uh, connection to work, let's just uh, from experience it should well it turns out it works right off the bat okay so I, I'm guessing that the Windows 2022 uh, has the driver built in because it just seems to recognize it it's interesting because some of the older versions would not, then you'd have to go and load the VMware. And the way you do that is go to action, go where it says guest OS and say install VMware tools. And then what that will do is it will go and give you, let's see if you just open up, uh, here we go, the file explorer. Then you're going to see basically a DVD. It's a fake DVD, obviously. It's loading a equivalent of an ISO file and it's giving it to you as a drive. So now you just have to run the setup 64. It's gonna load the VMware tools and that will make sure that you are running, you know, it has all of its drivers. And if ever you're installing one of these and you don't have the network because you chose the, the, the more advanced network selection, so the VMX Net 3, then you will have to make sure that the VM tools are installed if you're seeing an error on the bottom. And of course, in some cases, just in case you this helps anyone, uh, occasionally you'll have crazy uh, problems with the mice. So you try to move the mouse and it's just very erratic or it's just not responding. Uh, one of the tricks I can give you, apart from installing the VMware tools, uh, if you can't install it because the mouse is just so bad, you can never quite click on the right thing or you can't get forward or it's just frustrating, um, go ahead and make sure that you have a USB controller installed uh, because the mouse <laughs> uses it. And so if you have no USB controller at all, it really is painful. I don't know if it's um, a continual problem for everyone at all times, but I've run into it sporadically. And uh, usually, I mean, it's only happened to me maybe three or four times in my life, and I've done a lot of these, so it's not consistent, and sometimes I'm not sure what I did different from the previous ones. Uh, so it's, But most of the time, I believe it's just the USB um, drivers that didn't load, and I believe that I've narrowed it down to that. So if you have any comments on that, leave them below. So here we go. Uh, looks like we're up and running, and... I'm not seeing any any errors. Uh, one of the things that we can do, of course, is I was just there. I go back into the server manager, and we can take a quick look. And we're just going to go ahead and go where it says uh, computer management, and I'm going to go into device manager. And what I'm going to look for are exclamation points, or so there's no. There's no alerts, there's no errors, there's no, everything looks good. So I believe that this server would be usable as is running 2022 on top of VMware vSphere ESXi 6.0. This is update three. I'm not even sure this is the very latest of the six. Um, you would have to, to of course, um, try to get the, the last one that they produced. It's quite a few years ago. And there is no more support for this version, so keep that in mind. If there's anything uh, too strange that happens, uh, let's document it together and 
uh, work it out. But at this point, it looks like it's working and uh, it'll be used from there. Now, if you will be moving this into, let's say, a production server later on and so forth, you may wish to, and it's advised, uh, recommended, that you change the hardware compatibility to be something higher than what it is there to allow it to have uh, potentially more processors, more memory. Um, it's just, it's an increase in overall uh, functionality for the VMs at that point. Now, one of the things that you will want to do before you start using this, especially in a production environment, is you're going to want to make sure uh, to go and to put in your key here. So basically, you just click on here. You would put, because right now it's not activated, so it didn't put a key. So what you want to do is activate it, because you'd want to have this problem before you put anything on this virtual machine. Because if you think about it, if you're going to spend three, four hours setting up an ERP system or whatever system you need, and then all of a sudden find out that you, for some weird reason, it won't activate, something's fishy. Uh, you want to know that right off the bat. And of course, you could always contact Microsoft. This is a new operating system in this case, so it's not as bad as doing the opposite where you've got VMware 8, for example, and you're trying to load a server a 2003 or 2008, and then that, that certainly would change things around. Um, so go ahead and do that. If you're going to go and migrate this to another server that has a more recent ESXi version, then I strongly recommend that you upgrade or change the hardware compatibility that it is set to. Right now it's set to 6.0 because it is 6.0. You can move that up to whatever other version you have that is more recent. So I'm Bob Pellin, CTO Bob. I hope this was helpful. And of course, you can leave some comments below, as I've said. You can also reach us at ctobob.com, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.